Hi, and welcome back to our discussions with Dr. Roberto Lang, Director of Non-Invasive Cardiology at the University of Chicago. I'm Kerry Short from Phillips Healthcare, and we're here virtually with Dr. Lang to discuss how COVID-19 impacts the heart. This is a two-part series. In part one, we discuss the impact to the left heart. In this, part two of the series, we're gonna focus on how COVID-19 impacts the right side of the heart and how you evaluate it. Welcome, Dr. Lang. Well, thank you, uh, Kerry, very much for the opportunity to share with uh, all of you our experience of the effects of how COVID affects uh, the, the right side. Okay, so let's start with helping us understand the ways in which you see COVID-19 impacting the heart. Well, we talked in the, in the previous uh, part of the series on the effect of COVID-19 on the left heart. It is very interesting to see that in 35, approximately 35% of the patients, COVID-19 affects uh, the right heart. And it does that by either creating enlargement and or right ventricular dysfunction. But this happens very frequently. No surprise given the connection to the lung. So can you help us understand the impacts to the right heart and how to assess them? Of course. And this is a typical patient. Again, don't expect beautiful echoes because these uh, patients are all sitting and, and coughing and it's very difficult to obtain excellent image qualities. These studies are done without an EKG to minimize the exposure of the sonographer to the patient. But in many of these patients, we, when we did the right ventricular imaging in the right ventricular focus view, we see that the right ventricle is enlarged and poorly contracted. This, of course, can be interpreted as being secondary to an increase in, in pulmonary vascular resistance, and that can be caused by a myriad of situations. It can be hypoxia and hypercapnia, pulmonary vasospasm, we have seen this happening in many patients in which the intensivist people were trying to find the adequate mechanical ventilator settings. And it also can happen in something that I'm going to show you in the next case. Uh, look at this patient. This is a, another patient that presents with right ventricular enlargement and or dysfunction. You can see that the right ventricle off the bat is extremely dilated. You can see that there is some septal flattening of the interventricular uh, septum. And uh, when you start imaging the right ventricle, you can see actually that the right ventricle is extremely dilated. For those of you who like uh, echo minutia, you can see that there is almost a McConnell sign in which the apex of the right ventricle is hypercontractile. And when we use contrast, you can see, again, extreme dilatation of, of the ventricle. And uh, the sonographer was very clever and did some imaging of a pulmonary artery. And we can see there that there was a large pulmonary embolus. That is another situation that can create a right ventricular uh, enlargement. So, wow, clearly we see that COVID-19 impacts the right side too. Well, some very compelling cases that you showed, thank you. Now, you know, most echo discussions typically revolve around evaluating the left side of the heart. So can you tell us more about how to properly assess the RV in general and specifically for these COVID-19 patients? Yeah, gladly. Uh, this is a, a beautiful right ventricular focus view. You know, measurements in the right ventricle should not be made in the apical four chamber view. The transducer need to be moved laterally and rotated to obtain the largest tricuspid annulus. So one of the dimensions that I usually recommend that is in the guidelines is this right ventricular basal diameter. It's usually measured in the one third base here of the right ventricle. And usually the number to remember, if it's larger than 41 millimeters, that tells you that the ventricle is dilated. We traditionally in every echo lab use the TAPSI or the tricuspid annular plane systolic excursion 
you can see here, this is actually doing an M mode of the base here of the free wall of the right ventricle. And this distance has to be in excess of 1.6 centimeters. Providing us similar information on the longitudinal motion of just that focus of the right ventricle is the S prime the DTI derived tricuspid lateral annular systolic velocity that usually has to be when it's less than 9.5, we know that that is uh, abnormal. So lately we have probably seen the, 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 the advent of, the, of, of new excellent software that in a semi-automated or almost automated way is capable of calculating right ventricular strain. Right ventricular strain is defined as the percent shorting of a region of interest relative to its original length. It's usually visualized as a negative percent, and we obtain it from the free wall and of a septum, but usually we usually only use the right ventricular free wall information. The guidelines suggest that the normal value of right ventricular free wall strain is that of minus 20%. So let me show you now, this is a, one of our COVID-19 patients. And uh, you can see just off the bat, this is a, a RV focus view. You can see that the ventricle is not particularly dilated, but it is hypocontractile. And uh, uh, of course, when we do the right ventricular strain in this patient, it is only minus 9%. So there is a huge reduction in right ventricular free wall strain in this patient. Now let's take another patient. In this patient, if you look at it, again, a right ventricular focus view in a COVID patient, you can see that the ventricle is not particularly, the right ventricle is not particularly dilated. And uh, it seems like maybe the performance is at the lower limits of normal, etc. But, you know, then we did TAPSI, and you can see that the TAPSI, in which we look only at this point here of the right ventricular free wall is normal, and the S wave is also completely normal. But interesting, when you do strain, and you can see how nicely this software can track the right ventricle, you can see that we are getting a the right ventricular free wall strain of minus 16. So here you have a patient that has a, with strain a reduction in uh, the performance of, of, the, of the heart. Now, let me tell you why strain definitely is uh, something that we should do in every patient. Let's take this patient here. This is not a COVID patient, but just a patient to make the argument of why we should use RV strain. This patient has, as you can see, moderate to severe TR, and you would all agree that the function of this right ventricle is reduced. Because of the presence of TR, the motion here of the base of the free wall appears to be moving normally. TAPSI is 1.6, and the S prime wave is 14 larger than 9.5. So if you if you looked at this, you would say, well, how can it be? The ventricle is not functioning, but TAPSI and the S wave provide me with normal values. So we sent this patient to have an MRI. When you do an MRI, you can see very nicely that the right ventricle is enlarged and the right ventricle is extremely poorly contracted. When we do actually strain in this patient, you can see again how nicely this software tracks the right ventricular free wall. You can see again now that the right ventricular free wall strain is of minus 10. So I, I, I would like to, to sort of make this argument, which I think is, is very important, is that if you want to get a good correlation with ejection fraction obtained with MRI, strain is the way to go. When you do TAPSI and you do other, uh, and you do the S-wave, you can get at times for many types of reasons, 
discordant results. Wow, that's a pretty compelling argument and a set of cases to show that. And thanks for highlighting how to assess the RV. So is there anything in the literature that indicates that the quantitation of the right heart may provide information on outcomes for these patients, specifically the COVID-19 patients? Yes. Well, that is a, a, a great, great uh, question. And, you know, there, there really are not many publications. That the, this is uh, the first publication is a publication that shows that these uh, investigators found that the most common cardiac pathology was right ventricular dilatation and dysfunction. And they observed it in about 39% of the cases. Now, this other second study is very eye-opening. This is a study made uh, in New York between March 26th and April 2nd. So they had 105 echoes on COVID patients that were hospitalized with a positive diagnosis. 31% of their patients had right ventricular dilatation. You know, those patients that were dilated, the RV was dilated, 41% of them died by the end of the study. And of those that did not have right ventricular enlargement, only 11% died. So you can see that making a good assessment of right ventricular size is very important. And if you look at, this is a a very important study that was published in in Jack Cardiovascular Imaging by our colleagues in Wuhan, China, the epicenter of all of this this COVID. And they uh, actually had also the ability to obtain right ventricular strain in their patients. So this is one of the illustrations of their paper in which they showed a patient that had a very uh, reduced strain of 16.8%. And this patient unfortunately went to die 17 days after the echo acquisition. And then there was another patient with a normal strain of, of minus Uh, 29, uh, and this patient did not experience an event, at at least we know in in this particular study, up to two months after the echo was acquired. When they took all of their patients and divided them into turtiles or divided them into normal and abnormal uh, right ventricular free wall strain, you can see that all of those that had abnormal strain, uh, they had a, a reduction in so significant reduction in mortality. And when you divide them in turtiles, you can see again how nicely these patients actually get to divide uh, themselves according to a, a particular uh, strain. Well, what a great explanation for RV, Dr. Lang. And clearly you demonstrated the importance of RV strain to be a very important assessment tool for these patients. Now, RV strain has been around for a while, but there's a lot more people talking about it and taking more of an interest. Why the renewed focus? Well, I think that for the, the main reason I would tell you is that we have now excellent you know, semi and automated software to be able to obtain this parameter. Secondly, I would tell you because this parameter is easy to acquire and extremely reproducible. And I think that that's why this will be the way in which we'll be assessing right ventricular performance in all of our echoes in a very short while. That's great. So this concludes our two-part series on how COVID-19 impacts the heart and how to assess both the LV and RV function using ultrasound. You've really shown how important it is to address both of these chambers for these patients. Dr. Lang, thank you so much for these great cases and thank you for your time. And thank you for having me, it was a pleasure.